Hey YouTube, this is Navy98. This is part two of a series of videos I'm doing on the World War II German rifle grenade launcher system and its associated grenades. In part one, we talked about the actual Gewehrgranatgerät or rifle grenade device, uh, also known as a Schiesbecker or shooting cup. And I uh, demonstrated how it attached to a Car 98K rifle. Uh, talked about its use uh, and employment in World War II and on some numbers on how many were produced and how they were used throughout the war. I also briefly touched on the different types of rifle grenades that it used. So the purpose of this video is actually to go more in depth on the uh, main types of rifle grenades that were used by the Germans during World War II. So if you haven't checked out that first video, I'll put a link to it in the comments below. Go ahead and check that out first and then come back to this one. So along with the introduction of the Gewehrgranat Garat in May of 1942, the Germans introduced three main types of rifle grenades. Uh, the first was a rifle high explosive grenade. The second was a, an anti-tank rifle grenade. And the third was a practice or dummy round uh, that was very similar to the high explosive grenades that the soldiers could use uh, practicing shooting at targets. It would emit smoke uh, upon impact of a target and kind of give the soldiers a good idea of how accurate they were in firing these weapons. Uh, later on in the war, they had other, um, other rifle grenades were developed. Um, these were called special purpose grenades, of which I have one here, which is a propaganda grenade. Uh, and I'll talk about that later on. So first off, we're going to talk about the high explosive or anti-personnel rifle grenade uh, referred to by the Germans as the Gewehr Springgranate. This grenade was relatively unchanged throughout the course of the war, although it would go through several models and iterations. For the most part, the effectiveness and the range uh, basically remained unchanged from 1942 all the way through the end of the war. This is a resin copy of a grenade. Uh, however, everything else uh, is fairly identical on here. It was cast from an original copy. Uh, the main difference you would see is that this band right here would be painted yellow on the originals, and this cap could unscrew uh, because this is could also be used as a hand grenade uh, if you didn't want to use it as a rifle grenade. So again, this is a 30 millimeter device that would fit inside the Schiesbecker. You notice here that the banding uh, is rifled to fit inside the rifled Schiesbecker, uh, which gives it stability during flight. So this does have a, an impact uh, fuse here. So upon launching, if it strikes the impact fuse, it will detonate immediately. Uh, if it does not hit that uh, impact fuse on landing and just lands uh, on its side or on its back or whatever, uh, between the time of firing and the time of this actually exploding uh, would be 11 seconds. Otherwise, like I, said, like I said, the impact would set it off. As I mentioned, the cap could be unscrewed. Similar to the stick grenade, you would pull the cap end and then the soldier could launch this uh, just by throwing it. This had a maximum effective range when launched from the Schiesbecker of 300 meters and a maximum uh, effective burst radius of 30 meters. And like I said, these remain fairly unchanged throughout the course of the war. The second type of rifle grenade that was produced by the Germans was the anti-tank rifle grenade or armor piercing rifle grenade. These used a shape charge. Um, this is one of the later models I have. Uh, the first model was called the Gewehr Panzerkanata. So due to the relative, relative inaccuracy of soldiers shooting at tanks and hitting a vulnerable spot with these anti-tank grenades. The Germans recommended firing at tanks at distances of less than 100 meters. And these could really only penetrate lightly armored vehicles up to about 50 millimeters of armor. I don't have a copy of the Gewehr Panzergranata, so I'll put a picture up here. But these weren't in use for very long as they were designed to only penetrate lightly armored vehicles. They could also be used in an emergency against personnel, uh, but again, that was uh, limited use only just due to the fact that this was a shape charge and did not have a wide dispersion uh, on the explosives. As the Gewehr Panzergranatas kind of went out of fashion with the heavier armor uh, used in the war, this was designated the Gross Gewehr Panzergranata 40. 
Um, the 40 designates the width of the projectile here, which is 40 millimeters. Again, this, this portion right here is 30 millimeters. This was introduced in October of 1942 as a replacement for the previous Gewehr Panzergranada. And it increased the armor penetration capability from about 40 to 50 millimeters to a total of 80 millimeters. And the range on this was very similar to the previous anti-tank round, which is about 44 to 110 meters of effective range. And with improvements uh, to tank armor throughout the war, the Germans continually improved upon these. They came up with two different, uh, two other versions that were specifically, specifically developed for the SS. And they were the SS Gewehr Panzergranada 46 and 61. Again, the 46 and the 61 talks about the base of the round before it enters the tube. I don't have copies of those, so I'll put up some pictures here. The SS Gewehr Panzergranada 46 increased the armor penetration to 90 millimeters, and the SS Gewehr Panzergranada 61 had an armor penetration of up to 125 millimeters. There were several other special purpose rifle grenades introduced throughout the, the war. One was called the Gewehr Nebel Granada 42, and essentially that was a a smoke grenade for use in concealment of troop movements. You also have the rifle propaganda grenade, which I'll talk about, and a parachute flare grenade that, just as it sounds, would shoot flares from the grenade. So the rifle grenades were issued to soldiers in these wooden cases, uh, like I have here before you. This is actually a repro of one that I weathered. This one in particular is for the Gross Gewehr Panzergranada but they would be labeled appropriately depending on the type of rifle grenade that was inside. This one is for the Gewehr Spring Granata. And so they were issued in these cases, uh, depending on the size of grenade, either in boxes, cases of 20 or 30, and then they could be portioned out to the, uh, to the pouches that I showed you in the previous video. Inside these cases, each grenade would be packaged in a cardboard tube uh, like this. And inside the tube, the projectile that should be used to shoot the actual rifle grenade would be attached to the rifle grenade uh, with another strip of cardboard. By the end of the war, there were so many different variations of propellant cartridges, it was pretty much impossible for the soldiers to figure out what they should use. And again, that's why they went to the system of actually attaching the correct propellant cartridge to each rifle grenade. And while I'm on it, the book that I've used for these two videos for the bulk of the research is this one here, Deutsche Gewehrgranat und Gewehrgranat Grat. Sorry for my butchery of the German language. Um, unfortunately, it's only in German. However, Google Translate is a great tool. So I um, highly recommend this book if you're interested in any of the information that I put in these two videos. Uh, the information here contain the information contained in this book is obviously a lot more than what I'm putting out in these videos and goes into all different facets of the, of the development of these grenades throughout World War II by the Germans. So a great resource. So this is, an act this is actually an original rifle grenade that I have. It is the Gewehr Propaganda Granata. And so what this was, was it had a removable tube here and inside the rifle grenade itself, they would roll up propaganda leaflets in here in the language of whoever they were fighting, whether it be the Russians, Americans, so on and so on. Load them up into here, put the cap back on. Uh, it had a small explosive charge. They would fire this where they wanted the leaflets to be spread. And then it had a nine second fuse where it would explode and distribute the leaflets where they wanted them to go. So again, like I said, that is an original Gewehr propaganda gr granata. And then I also have some original propaganda leaflets that were fired at the Russians during World War II. I'll go ahead and take a look at those real quick. I'm not going to actually translate most of these for you because um, a lot of it, as you can imagine, is very anti-Semitic and I think even Translating these and talking about what these say on YouTube will probably get me kicked off, even though it is a historical uh, object. I will just go ahead and translate a couple of these for you, just to give you an idea of what they say. 
just some more here. And as you can see, these are all in Cyrillic because these were, these were shot at Russian troops. So like I said, again, these would be rolled up um, inside another container that would fit inside these grenades, inserted in here, and then shot where the Germans wanted them to go. By the end of the war, close to 60 million rifle grenades of all types have been produced for the Germans. This started in 1942 all the way up until 1945. Uh, and they were used extensively throughout the war. Unfortunately, I could not find much in the way of archive video showing the use of these in the war. Uh, I put one small clip here at the end of the Battle of Stalingrad of a, uh, of a German soldier uh, with a she specker attached to his rifle. And unfortunately, I haven't found too many primary sources about the German soldiers' experience with these rifle grenades and their effectiveness in combat. So if anybody has any uh, information on where you could find some primary sources on that, please put that in the comments below. Hope you liked this video. Until next time, this is Navy 98 saying, Go Navy.